The deciduous forest of the Midwest is home to many plants and animals we all recognize. One such animal, the eastern box turtle, is lurking throughout the forest floor. This turtle is a male eastern box turtle. You can identify it by his bright red eyes. The female eastern box turtle has dark eyes. This is the only known turtle species to have different colored eyes according to gender. Eastern box turtles got their name because they inhabit the eastern part of the United States. Some live as far south as Florida, while others are as far west as Missouri. Eastern box turtles live in an area no larger than a square mile and aren't very territorial. They only live on land, which makes them terrestrial, unlike their aquatic cousins. The only time you may see a box turtle in water is when they want to cool off. Eastern box turtles love to visit creeks because they not only provide water, but contain many food sources. In terms of diet, this is one of the things that people kind of get wrong when they find them in the wild and try to keep them as pets because the assumption is with some other turtles, you just feed them a lot of vegetable matter like lettuce and stuff like that. The natural diet of these guys is actually um, more towards the meat end of the spectrum so that they're mainly carnivores and they get more herbivorous the longer you keep them. But in the wild, they're basically feeding on things like earthworms and snails and slugs and beetles and things like that. And you know, they'll go around in the spring when berries are available and eat some berries. They'll eat mushrooms. Apparently some of these mushrooms are things that are known to be poisonous to humans, but they, they can eat them safely. With most of the United States being populated by humans, this turtle has no more room to hide. Domestic and wild animals encounter each other in our suburban neighborhoods quite often. This dog and his owner will witness such an encounter. Turtles have poor eyesight and are slow, so this dog will easily sneak up to it. But the turtle has her defense ready. The shell is protecting her from the dog's claws. But luckily, this dog's owner was nearby. Although most dogs can eventually break through a turtle's shell, this turtle was lucky. Turtles cannot see when inside their shell, so they can only anticipate safety or danger. They can pull their limbs in completely as well, which is a great defense against their predators. And their predators can be any type of bird of prey, like hawks and owls, to fox and coyotes, even raccoons, because they have the opposable thumbs. Their shell, is part of their spine. Most people think that a turtle can just shed its shell like a crab. In fact, if you feel the back of the turtle, you can feel the actual vertebrae. Their shell is just an extension of that spine. The last time I saw a box turtle in the wild was at least seven years ago. And then this particular box turtle actually was in a pool of water where they're not supposed to be. So I assume somebody put him there or he fell in or whatever it may be. But it's been a long time since I've seen a box turtle. In the last decade, eastern box turtle population has diminished. They were recently listed as an endangered species, but are now threatened in some states. The reasons why are quite easy to recognize. One of the reasons that they're endangered is due to habitat loss. That probably began all the way back to the early days of Ohio becoming a state and the development of a lot of the farmland, all the way to more modern times and urban sprawl. And they just have less habitat in order to roam, find food, 
shelter and water. There's a lot of buildings being built. There's a lot of parking lots and trees that are being cut down and houses and subdivisions and businesses. And they're taking the habitat of the turtles that live there and they leave the turtles with nowhere to go. If a turtle needs to get from one part of its home range to another, or an area that's breeding habitat or feeding habitat, and there's a road in the way, then it's got to slowly make its way across that road, not get hit by a car. So one thing that you can do if you do see a turtle and you are driving, you can stop and help it in the direction it is going to cross the road to its safer area. Roads are most dangerous because the turtles are slow. This is the primary reason that habitat loss has diminished their population. But there is another reason, just as severe. One of the major reasons of population loss comes from our love of bringing wild animals back home as pets. When someone takes a box turtle home, they just took out its natural habitat. They can't reproduce anymore. They're living in captivity. And people don't necessarily know how to take care of a box turtle, so they die in captivity. Or they release them back into the wild, and after being held so long, they forget their instincts. They don't know how to hunt. They don't know how to fend for themselves. They become more social. For instance, someone came in today. They had a box turtle that they had found. They were interested in keeping it as a pet for now and then wondering if later on that I would purchase it from them. I informed them that they are a protected species and we certainly do not buy or sell reptiles at all anymore. I give someone information on how to care for them if they are, but recommend that they release them back to the area that they found them in. The pet trade is a major cause of low turtle population because many people don't know that turtles are endangered. Some pet stores may not know or follow the state laws and regulations. This is why people need to know the facts. Often we find that there are situations where someone has brought a box turtle into captivity and they've had this turtle for maybe a number of years now. And generally it's, it's not a good idea to re-release this animal into a wild. So if this animal has become more than you can care for, there are societies out there that care for reptiles. There are also nature centers or other organizations that might be able to take your animal into captivity and care for it in a more specialized manner. There was a period of time in my mid to late teens when I had uh, quite a few turtles. The number was up around 23, I think, when I last counted. All of these turtles were either rescues or the offspring of the rescued turtles. I had some snapping turtles, I had red eared sliders, and uh, box turtles, of course. The snapping turtles were really cool and a lot of fun to watch, but they were just a little too mean. Red eared sliders, a little too skittish, but the, the box turtles were just right. One of the turtles that I rescued was a box turtle. He had had his shell split open either by a rock or he was dropped or thrown or, or something like that. And we found him out in the woods with his shell cracked open and we scooped him up and brought him home and we disinfected it because it was an open wound. And then we super glued the, the hole shut and painted over it with some acrylic nail polish. He did heal rather quickly, but with an injury to the shell, it's, it's been my finding at least that there's always gonna be a big gnarly scar and it probably looks a lot worse than it is. But we kept him for around six months just to make sure that it was indeed healed and it wasn't infected and he was gonna be able to survive on his own in the wild. One thing we'll find is that box turtles that have been taken into captivity will often pick up some type of disease that may not be devastating to the animal in captivity, but if re-released out into the environment, may pose a threat to wild populations. This is yet another reason why first not to take the animal into captivity in the first place. And if you have had that box turtle for a number of years, it may be best to find another suitable home for it and not re-release it into a wild population. There are many reasons why the eastern box turtle has decreased in population, and we, as responsible human beings, must protect them. Preserve the box turtle by just educating people, teaching people about them, about their habitats, about them being endangered. If we can educate people, they're gonna be more informed. Well, not a lot of people are aware that this animal is threatened due to habitat destruction, collection for pet trade, or just general environmental factors such as the cars and the roadways that are really a great threat to turtles. There's a lot of local states who do not have any legislation on turtles and collecting them and pet trades and things like that. If 
you are concerned, you can contact your local senator and let them know about the issue and see if you can get legislation passed in your state to help the native turtles. Getting involved in protecting them, you know, one thing is if you see a turtle crossing the road, if it's a safe area to do so, you know, stop and try to help it. I think it's a terrible shame. You know, when you're out and about walking around in the woods and you're kind of taking in the wildlife, the box turtle, I think, personally, is the one that you're always kind of more inclined to sit down and watch and enjoy. And there's birds and, and squirrels and stuff, but you see those every day. The box turtles you don't see quite that often. They're kind of a novelty. If they're endangered or threatened, not only is that horrible for the turtles because they you know, have this chance of being wiped out completely, but nobody can enjoy them. Nobody can sit down and, and, and watch them. I believe that the eastern box turtle has every right to be here. It was here before we were, and I just don't think it's right that humans are taking over their habitat. In my opinion, we really should care about the box turtles because they are one of nature's recyclers, but they're also a native species. Native species have a tendency to help out other native species. If we drop the species from the world, make them extinct, then other animals potentially will be harmed because in a food web, every animal plays a distinct role. Without this role, we do not know what species may be affected by it. The woodlands, the wetlands, the natural prairies and meadows that are here in Ohio, they're all important to this web of life that we're all a part of. Humans are a part of it as well. In order for the ecosystems to keep thriving and the animals to keep reproducing, the plants to exist, we just need to respect nature. I think box turtles are great animals and again I've run into so many children that this was their first experience with a wild animal in nature. And again I'm trying to encourage them that this is an animal to sit and observe, to watch carefully, not an animal to collect or pick up or hold. And you can learn so much from observing these creatures, it's just great to watch them in their natural state. I want to make sure that they're protected for the future and we really hope that people will be respectful of these creatures and just remember even though it's a turtle it is a wild animal and it belongs in nature.